Hey, uh, how are you? So we're doing this for the first time, but to introduce ourselves, I'm Kaylee. I am still social media manager, and I'm here with Paris, who is our in-house plan expert. Usually we do Instagram lives every week, but since we're having some technical difficulties, what we're going to do to make up for that is kind of, um, you know, video chat each other and help answer your questions, and then we'll post them on IGTV. So to get us started, um, and since daylight savings time is here, although we're losing an hour of sleep, which is a little sad, we're gaining sunlight. And, what's, and what that means for your plants is it's time to come out of dormancy. So Paris is going to help us a little bit about um, all things spring plant care. So to get started, Paris, can you kind of walk us through just spring plant care 101, the kind of things we should be thinking about um, in March and in April? Oh yeah, of course, and I'm happy to help with anything. Um, so basically, you know, with spring coming around the corner, we're going to see temperatures as well as our daylight hours starting to increase for our plants. So there's a little uh, bit of a reassessing that we're going to have to do for plants because obviously in the fall winter for plants that may have been, you know, too far away from the light source, we move them closer because we want to increase those light levels. But now that they're, the light levels are increasing again for us, um, some of those plants actually might not need to be as close to those windows. Let's say, you know, if they're supposed to be more indirect light and we place them in more direct light during the fall winter. Um, and when that happens too, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to start seeing changes in the frequencies of our watering. So in the fall winter, you know, our waterings were really infrequent because plants were taking up water a lot more slowly. Um, but now that those daylight hours are increasing and as well as those temperatures also help, you know, dry out the soil, we're going to see that these plants might be ready for more waterings too. Um, so basically, uh, when this time comes around, you'll basically want to see the plants that you have by certain windows, um, reassess that light, you know, move any plants that shouldn't get direct sun back a few feet, or you can incorporate a sheer curtain, um, you know, and other than that, if they are meant to be there, then, you know, you're going to want to gradually check in on that soil over, over time as these daylight hours increase, because testing the moisture of the soil is really the only way to see, to, to like moderate how fast the plant is taking up water other than physical symptoms so as soon as you're able to see the rate of how far um, how fast it's drying out then you can see how uh, often you'll need to water it um, moving forward um, or you can also wait for plants to tell you uh, when they're ready for water which is like most of them will start to droop or wilt over and some can even like curl inwards at the leaves so I would say for spring plant care I'd say the top two things to look out for is your lighting um, and definitely um, your watering frequencies Definitely helpful. I think something that comes to mind for me is the sun's finally coming back. Like, let's throw our plants in there. And I feel like it lends itself to kind of like easily overwatering your plants because you're ready to get back on that like spring, summer watering <laughs> schedule, but your plant's not there yet. Um, and I feel like anytime people DM us and they ask us about how often they should water their plant, we can give a range, but it really depends on what your plant is telling you. So always checking the soil um, and making sure you're listening to what your plant is saying instead of you saying, it's Friday, let's water plants today. Yeah, uh, exactly. And it's not to say, too, that just because, you know, we're getting an extra hour of light, like we got to start watering all the plants a little more or once a week. You know, some of these plants can take up water more slowly than others. And you know, another thing about spring plant care is repotting, you know, because a lot of nutrients in the soil have may have degraded over time. And even like the absorptive properties of soil can degrade as well. So, um, you know, and even plants that get pot bound, you know, there's more root mass than soil. So there's no um, soil that's in there retaining that moisture. So you might see you're watering your plant more frequently because of the um, because of it becoming too um pot bound in the container. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind too, you know, this might be the time to repot your plants uh, and either, you know, give them a nice soil replenishment or even upgrade in container size one to two, about one to two inches, depending on uh, the plant. Um, but, you know, some slow growing plants like cacti and succulents, uh, they might not need repotting in the spring, uh, like to upgrade in container size, like they might just need just some fresh uh, nutrient rich soil to give them that nice boost uh, for the spring summer. Um, and then they'll be good to go. Nice. And I think something that comes to mind for a lot of people when spring comes around in terms of their plants is fertilizing. And it's a hot topic. People have so many different thoughts on it. 
people asked us all winter, should I fertilize my plants now? Should I wait? So do you mind kind of like giving us a bit of an overview of, you know, starting to fertilize again, how much, or should you wait? Kind of that whole process. Yeah, of course. So as we know, like we do usually forego fertilizer in the fall winter since plants are using as much nutrients and they kind of go into dormancy. Um, and just so everyone knows too, you know, fertilizer isn't food for the plant. It's actually to give them that nutrient boost that they need in the spring and summer when they're actively growing the most. Or it can also help, uh, you know, compensate for any degraded nutrients in the soil if the plant has been in that soil for a long time. So mm -hmm. now when spring and summer comes around, or I'm sorry, spring, um, we can start uh, considering fertilizing our plants. And usually uh, most uh, indoor tropical plants uh, will do good with an all balanced fertilizer um, on a either um, a weekly to biweekly basis. Um, it kind of depends on the plant. So you always want to do a little more research on it. Um, whereas if you're growing cacti and succulents and, you know, or plants that are growing in a more low nutrient environment, um, then you definitely want to use a more uh, cactus or, uh, you know, branded uh, fertilizer or just one that has a lower uh, NPK ratio, which is the three numbers that you'll see. Um, so, yeah, and usually when you fertilize, you know, there's different ways that you can do it. You know, there's organic, which is like ways that you can make it like compost or like worm castings. And then there's the synthetic methods, which is what we're probably more accustomed to. Um, like, you know, some, like liquid fertilizers, like slow release pellets, things like that. So it really um, just depends on how you want to go about fertilizing for you. Usually I use the liquid synthetic fertilizer and I, I'll dilute it into the water that I use for the plants every time I water them. So basically in the, in the spring, like I could be watering my plants on a weekly to biweekly basis and that's how I fertilize them. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to pay too much attention to fertilizing though, then I would recommend getting the slow release pellets because then you just incorporate it into the soil um, and it slowly releases into the plant as you water it and which could last about three to six months. Um, that said, however, if you're going to be repotting your plants freshly uh, during this time, then you actually don't really need to fertilize your plants um, mm -hmm. because you know, plants get their their energy from the light, but they also get the other macro and micronutrients from the soil. So, you know, when you freshly repot a plant, they're getting all that nutrients in the soil already. So you, there's really no need to fertilize um, unless you kind of want to see a little bit of more boost and like vigorous growth. Um, then I would fertilize, but definitely like dilute it at half the recommended strength um, just because you want to prevent over uh, fertilizing it. Super helpful stuff. And I think something that pops up for me is how do you know when you should be fertilizing your plant versus repotting it? Because you need to provide fresh nutrients for your plant, but when should I be fertilizing versus just repotting it? Okay. Yeah. Well, usually plants will need to be repotted um, probably a, roughly about 12 to 18 months after their initial transfer, but it really is completely dependent on how active that plant's growing. So you know, if it has been about 12 to 18 months and the plant's kind of more slow growing, you know, you might see um, some nutrient deficiencies, which we could save for another day. Um, or even like, a, you know, every time a new leaf pops up, a, an older leaf dies back. That could also be a sign of the plant needing to be repotted. Um, and from there, you know, if it's just because of nutrient degradation, um, then you can actually fertilize the plant instead of repotting it. If let's say you're in the winter time and it's showing those nutrient deficiencies, then I've, I've done that personally. And I've just, you know, fertilize at half strength at every watering just to give it that little boost that it needs until I am able to repot it. Um, other than that, you know, fertilizing when spring comes around, you know, you can start it whenever, um, as long as your plant is actively growing and receiving enough light, it'll be safe to fertilize. However, if you have plants in low light areas um, and they're like more slow growing, you know, not developing new growth and you definitely don't want to fertilize these plants because they really aren't using that much nutrients or even water in general. Um, so then you might find some nutrient toxicities instead and you might be over fertilizing the plant. Got it. Okay. Very helpful stuff. Thank you for breaking down the distinction. I think just having a general time period so people know the difference is really helpful because I think um, from the outside, sometimes it's difficult. You're like, I hear all this stuff about fertilizing and I hear all this stuff about repotting. Should I be doing both? Should I be doing it all? So I think like slowing down and seeing what your plant needs is key. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing we actually get asked about a fair amount, especially this time of year, is um, for people who live in warmer environments or if where they live is starting to get warmer, 
a lot of people will push to bring their indoor plants outside or on their window sills outside, that kind of a thing. So do you have any like basic recommendations about temperatures to look out for or a way to kind of transition the plant without putting it through shock? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I used to do this when I owned a house actually, and I, or not own rent, um, and I would move my mm -hmm. plants outside because it just adds a nice tropical look to the front door. Um, so basically some things you'll want to keep in mind is that you won't want to move the plants outside until night type, nighttime temperatures are about 55 to 60 degrees. Otherwise, if it's any colder, you know, you might see some temperature like cold shock on the plants. So definitely don't move them out unless it's um, about that range at night. Um, other things you'll want to consider is, you know, there's a lot of other environmental factors out there that you can't control like you can control in your home. So you may be, um, you may have, like you may see like more pest issues when you have um, plants outdoors. Um, so I personally would check the plants like daily, um, you know, looking at their leaves, making sure there's no pests and spraying them down if I do. Another good thing is assessing the light because obviously light outside is a lot lot stronger than light indoors so you'll want to make sure that you're putting plants in the correct spot if they're more full sun loving plants you know keeping them on like the south or west side of your house um, will be good for them however if there are plants that can only tolerate indirect light you're going to want to make sure you put them in a more shaded area or maybe like on your porch if you have like an awning on underneath um, and basically like when you're looking for that direct sun if you can see the actual sun in view of the plant from where you're placing it and it doesn't like direct sun um, then you should most likely put it in a place where it doesn't get that direct level or just put it in a more shaded space um, other than that the last thing i would say is to only move plants out there if they have a drainage hole because especially if you don't have them where they're covered from rain you know if it does happen to rain for a day or two you know a lot of that moisture is going to go into the planter but have nowhere to go so you're going to want to make sure that you know you make sure um, there's drainage in the pot so that any excess water can drain out um, but you know considering that there's you know you know the sun could be you know too intense where you have to water the plant more frequently or maybe there's a week where it's all overcast and rainy and you don't have to water the plant so you really have to kind of monitor the soil moisture during this time too in the transition um, until you kind of get a feel of how this plant is uh, reacting to the outdoor environment because depending on the light levels you give it you might see that you water it uh, way more frequently than indoors it could be every two to three days compared to one to two weeks um, whereas depending on if you put it in a more shaded then it might be a week or two um, so it really just depends and it's really important to test the moisture of the soil in order to know so same kind of love and monitoring we do for our indoor plants we'll do when we transition them outside which makes sense um are there any <laughs> this is if there's none let me know but are there any like plants you recommend never bringing outside i don't know if there are any controversial <laughs> indoor outdoor plants but um, yeah i wouldn't say there's like uh, the right plant to put in or outside because you know all these plants do grow outside but it has to just be the correct conditions correct light temperature humidity and whatnot so as long as you know what your plant needs then you can know what you're able to provide outdoors for it and maybe what you need to optimize so that it can thrive outdoors perfect yeah I worry for everyone's finicky plants especially like the big fiddly figs of the world too yeah that was my first their, <laughs> yep if you don't get their conditions right or if they're doing great indoors and you're like, maybe I'll put them outdoors, they might not love it. So mm -hmm. be careful. Yeah, and there is like, you know, some symptoms you could look out for. Like if you do move some plants outdoors and I know, you know, let's not talk about like the fiddle because he'll, they'll just display a hundred different symptoms for different things. But usually if you're transitioning these plants outdoors and let's say you start to notice like blackening on the leaves, scorching, a lot of crispiness or browning, then that could be an indication that the plant is either getting too much sun or you're not watering it as frequently. Um, mm -hmm. Or if it's getting, if you're seeing a lot of yellowing or mushing or rotting accompanied with really moist soil, then there's a chance that you watered it, you know, maybe too frequently, or maybe, you know, you didn't realize it was going to rain the next day and the plant got drenched right after you watered it. Um, so there's, so you just have to, you know, be mindful of the weather at this point too. So definitely and make sure you bring your plant babies inside if there's crazy weather because i think especially if it's a nice day you're like oh i want to bring my plant outside but then if it drops cool at night 
not so great for your plants. So just yeah, kind of especially with how Mother Nature has been, you know, some days it's like really warm and other days it's really cold. So, you know, this is something we got to consider like every day. We got to make sure those nighttime temperatures are still favorable for them so that we don't get any kind of temperature shock. So it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit at the lowest. Yeah, at the lowest. Usually once they start hitting below 55 is when you'll start to see some cold damage uh, displaying, which is um, blackening and kind of similar to like overwatering symptoms, but everything will be a lot more mushier. And um, for mm -hmm. even like some fleshier plants um, like bromeliad or even um, cacti and succulents, you can even see some of that purpling too as cold damage. Which is a sad feeling that I wish upon nobody. So yeah. Oh, and one last environmental factor, too, could be wind when you're talking about, like, mm -hmm. unfavorable weather, like storms, you know, because mechanical damage can also, like, hurt plants' leaves. And if you have your tropical plants out there, like big leafy ones, like this aglionema, and it's, like, blowing in the wind and it's crazy, you know, so you might see some leaves rip, some stems break. Um, so definitely keep, like, the wind uh, current in mind, too. That's helpful, especially just aesthetically keeping your plant together and not having ripped or damaged leaves. Mm -hmm. um, totally. Thank you. That's a really good factor that I didn't even think about. Yeah. <laughs> I've been busy here lately in New York. So um, thank you for all of this. First of all, this is a, a great intro to spring. I think we're all excited to get more sunlight. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you liked this, let us know. If you want us to try something new, also let us know. Um, if you have spring, spring plant care questions, drop them in the comments, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye, Thank guys. You.